Hello, we're going to talk about uh, the development of Vivian's character in this little tutorial. Um, and one of the uh, major sort of components, I suppose, of drama is the ability for us as an audience to watch the progression of a character from, from one state to another. And so we're going to use this focus question of what is it that influences Vivian's outlook on life? We see her values shift um, and we're just going to trace that and then draw some observations from that at the end. So the first dot point we've got there is that Vivian uh, begins the play in an arrogant tone. She, um, she states, I know all about life and death. I am, after all, a scholar of John Donne's Holy Sonnets. And um, so here we have um, Vivian talking directly to the, the audience and it's a, a great example of um, breaking down the fourth wall, the Brechtian device uh, that's used in drama. <clears throat> it's really um, um, a, a means of um, developing meta-theatre. So that's where the, um, the character on the stage actually talks about the process of um, writing a drama or, you know, developing a, a play. Um, so, you know, she she speaks a number of times. You know, one example is when she says, I suppose now we'll see some flashbacks of how how uh, cruelly or harshly I, I treated my, my former students. Um, so she's engaging with the, the language um, of, of drama, um, stepping out of character and talking about the actual play that she's in more so than being a ca character within. So anyway, um, just like John Donne, she begins with this arrogant tone to mask the reality that she is um, scared of uh, what's happening to her. She's been diagnosed with stage 4 metastatic ovarian cancer. Now I've, I've written here too that you know that it is a, a good example of dramatic irony because she only knows about uh, life and death in the abstract. She's been uh, a great student and scholar of John Donne's work and um, this is probably the thing that differentiates um, the play and the character of Vivian to John Donne and his poetry in the fact that Vivian hasn't lived a complete life. She's lived in the abstract and she really hasn't engaged with people and made strong friendships and relationships so really she's only got half of what um of, of what John Donne was really all about. And the next dot point says that her life is empty and bare. So uh, we've, we have talked about this idea that her name Vivian Baring uh, has many meanings and one of them is that, that um, there is a, a void in her life and that is the, the, um, her connection with emotion. We also have said that she's bearing up to the pain. She's also lost her bearings. Um, she's at a point where she doesn't Real, truly understand uh, how she fits in and what the purpose of her life has been. The next dot point says that her obsession with wit blinds her from the importance of human kindness. So she's really only got half of what um, John Donne's poetry was all about, and that's the um, the dramatic irony that that um, is evident in the in the in the play. Okay, uh, we see, uh, you know, I can't remember, about a third or halfway through the play that she, she recites the octave of if poisonous minerals. Um, and I, I think this is the one, it might, be death, it might be Death Be Not Proud actually, where she only, res the, um, um, she only recites the, the octave because she doesn't have the capacity to, to um, deal with the, the second half of it. And that's reflective of uh, 20th century um, uh, context, you know, that people have placed so much faith in medical science um, and they use it as a means of, of pushing death away um, that, that we're very unprepared for it when it, when it comes and, and she certainly um, struggles with that. Back up to this point up here, well, let's read it and see what it says. So it says she's unprepared for death, she only recites the octave of if poisonous minerals the sestet begins, but who am I? Which, which you know, when when you see that shift in the poem, it acknowledges um, that she has no personal connection to the concept of salvation. She hasn't got that capacity at that stage. 
Um, and we heard her say earlier that the, her only defence against her cancer and the only way she can stay strong is through the acquisition of vocabulary. So she can't actually deal with anything in the physical. She feels that she can she can overcome her uh, her um, her cancer through language by mastering the language and the, the meta language of it um, rather than, and, you know, de addressing the, the reality that's there in front of her. Okay, um, one thing that Margaret Edson does is she employs flashbacks of Vivian's uncompromising treatment of her students. And um, she does this as a means to um, to show her thought process. The the um, the next thing I've got there is that Jason, Dr. Jason Posner, is um, set up as the dramatic foil for Vivian. So the way in which he treats her mimics the way that she has treated her students um, formally, and and what that allows. The audience to see, but also for Vivian to see, is that that um, you know Vivian's in a point where she is very um, fragile and, and emotional, and she's not she's not able to, to gain any any uh, support at all from Jason, and that uh, that sort of forces her, or it, it sort of is the catalyst, I suppose, of her um, actually thinking back on. Um, her life and the way that she's treated people and the relationships she's had and it's started her questioning whether that her 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 purpose and um, you know her 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 set of um, beliefs has been worthwhile all the things that she's done um, she's she's starting to question how, how valid it is and she she does um, worry that that she's just going to end up a footnote in uh, somebody else's research paper and that will be the extent of the impact that she's had on on the earth okay so um <clears throat> the point here through through first-hand experience Vivian discovers empathy and it forces her to question her values she's challenged to reflect by Jason's treatment of her and he acts as a mirror for her and at this point in the play she says I look back I see these scenes and I dot 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 she hasn't got the language well she hasn't got the ability to um, comprehend really what's going on she's in unfamiliar territory and as a result she uh, isn't able to express how she's feeling and that's quite um, significant given that that her whole occupation has been the mastery of of the English language she also states uh, in, around this time talking about Jason so the young doctor like the senior scholar prefers research to humanity and then she says something along the lines of um, you know that that the that Vivian actually at this point is in need of human kindness and and it's not there for her so um, her uh, vulnerability she her isolation I suppose she's in this room um, isolated from the rest of the world and um, you know and, and she feels very vulnerable the next thing that she moves to is this point of realization and she states I thought being extremely smart would take care of it all but I see I've been found out and you know this is um, another moment in her progression where we see her start to get to the point of um, making a, a, a change in her perspective and outlook so the, the thing with the, um, the play is that it's not um, as uh, defined it's not as definitive as the the sonnet that you know the octave is full of arrogance and wit and then you have the the volta um, that word that indicates the shift and immediately uh, we move to emotion and submission in the play the, the um, Margaret Edson um, develops Vivian's character in a methodical manner so it, it unfolds before us so that we can see her thought processes and we can understand why she's making that change and that's far more realistic for us as a modern audience I think okay we move to the 
the, the, the Volta stage of the play, if, if you like to call it that. It's not necessary to, but we stated there that Vivian must embrace her own vulnerability. Um, she must <clears throat> shift away from her own hubris because she's full of pride and arrogance at the beginning and, and she must really expo expose her vulnerabilities to Susie and reach out to her, show her that she is scared and that she is um, open to... Um, to support um, so the popsicle scene is is a great moment where um, you know um, Vivian does in fact do that and I actually like to see the popsicle scene as as the turning point as the as the Volta and straight after Susie leaves um, Vivian states, you know, it was certainly a model and display. Popsicles, sweetheart, I can't believe my life has become so corny. And so she's talking to the audience about the fact that she, um, you know, she can't believe that it's come to this. But at the same time, she finds a little bit of comfort in it. And the next lines, and these are on page 45, she says, now is a time for simplicity. And then she says, now is a time for, dare I say it, kindness. So she starts to understand that, that um, simple, the simple things in life um, are more important, perhaps, than the, her pursuit of knowledge and understanding of everything. And there are very strong connections to Dunn and his context. Okay, so down here she becomes humble. She experiences humility. Um, in this scene around page 245, she chooses DNR and she states, let it stop. Um, and here she's disempowering death. So just like in Death Be Not Proud when he says, death thou shalt die, here we have a clear signpost that, that Vivian is prepared to die and she's she she's comforted and consoled in the thought of, of her death. She's not going to escape or run away from it anymore. She's not going to hide under her her blankets. She's she's going to uh, accept her fate, and um, there's a sense of calmness that comes from that. Okay, we see then down here when uh, Ian Ashford returns, and she asks her whether she'd like her to um, recite some death bin of uh, some some of John Donne's sonnets, and she opts for the runaway bunny. Okay, and here is a significant um, idea of this return to innocence, this childhood um, period where, um, you know, it, it's about the simple things and seeing things in a simplistic um, and innocent way. And this, re this uh, reading of the play, uh, of the picture book, sorry, reinforces Vivian's newfound value of simplicity um, and preparedness for death. And the, the, um, the, the picture book says, oh, Viv um, Ashford says, ah, oh, it's a little allegory for the soul. No matter where the soul may hide, God will find it. And uh, so it, it shows that, that everybody has the capacity to, to change and to, um, to, to find um, solace and comfort and, and re-evaluate re what's important in life. Okay, and then finally, when we get to the final scene um, of the play, and you can see this as a couplet, the stage directions project that Vivian has found peace. So she's naked, she's um, all of the trappings of the modern world, modern society, the sins of society have fallen from her, and um, she walks into the light. And we can see that, um, we can read that in a secular sense that she finds enlightenment, and where's the audience see that she, she understands what's important and we can certainly also read it in a Christian sense that she has achieved salvation. So the character development of Vivian is very cleverly constructed uh, and it, it mirrors so many of John Donne's that it's, uh, poems that it's not funny. Um, Edson has uh, obviously um, toiled and and worked every scene for um, maximum leverage to to um, to make that point to her society that that the American society may have lost its way, but it's never too late to to realign and reassess what's important in life and make those changes.